Thank you for watching Transformative Advances in Molecular Biology, a retrospective look at critical events in the history of the discipline. The presentations in the series were prepared by graduate students in a journal colloquium at the University of Florida, supervised by Mark Settles and Kevin Folta. So in this video we would discuss the preliminary aspects of polymerase chain reaction, PCR, a method that changed the way we see DNA manipulation. When we think about PCR, two things come to mind. First is the powerful amplification of specific DNA fragments, which most of us perform on a daily basis. Second is the figure of Kerry Mullis, who received the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1993 for his, for his discovery and whose ideas are marked by geniality and controversy. Although two previous papers by Kerry Mullis had reported the PCR technique, we decided to discuss the 1988 science article as it was the first to use the thermostable DNA polymerase, the TAC. PCR is characterized by repetitive cycles of denaturation, annealing, and extension of a reaction containing primarily DNA, DNTPs, DNA polymerase, and a pair of primers to function as templates for this enzyme. Before incorporation of TAC, the clenol fragment of E. coli DNA polymerase would be used. Since TAC is a thermostable, DNA polymerase, they did not need to add fresh enzyme at every cycle as done with clenol and could increase temperature during annealing and extension, which leads to greater specificity of amplification. This figure shows a comparison between amplification using clenol and TAC as the DNA polymerase. Up to 35 cycles of reactions were performed and gel electrophoresis or solvent blot were used to detect the amplified fragments, represented on panel A and B respectively. A cell line with a deletion for the locus of interest was used as a negative control. The use of TAC allowed the extension temperature to be increased from 37 to 70 degrees Celsius. This resulted in greater specificity of the reaction, as can be seen in panel A, by a reduction in a specific amplification by comparing the gel products of reactions using clenol or TAC. A more specific fragment analysis by solvent block shows that amplification is also increased when TAC is used. The intensity of the band increases as more cycles of reactions are performed, but the actual PCR efficiency is lower. This is because some of the main components become limited in the reaction and the enzyme is not able to amplify the newly synthesized DNA completely in a lot of time. Next, the authors tested factors that might improve the DNA amplification process, starting by extension time and concentration of tag. And the specific bands started to be present when the extension time and concentration of the enzyme increased and can, as can be seen in lanes 4, 9, and 10. Increasing the annealing temperature from 40 degrees to 55 degrees Celsius improved the specificity as demonstrated on figure 2b. The DNA from cell line containing the target was diluted on DNA from the cell line with the deletion of the target. After 40 cycles of PCR at 55 degrees, the authors demonstrate that it is possible to amplify DNA fragments even when the target is diluted to 10 to minus 4, as shown in the figure by using gel electrophoresis, or 10 to minus 6 by using solvent blot. Annealing at 40 degrees reduced the threshold to 10 to minus 2 and 10 to minus 4 using gel electrophoresis and solvent blot, respectively. Only gel electrophoresis is shown in this picture. To prove the power of PCR, the authors tested if amplification would occur when, when, even when a single copy of the target was present. At 10 to minus 6 dilution, it is expected 0.3 copies of the genes, and thus 4 out of the 15 amplifications should return positive under a Poisson distribution. Although they, they instead observed 9 positive results on solder analysis, these were likely to contain only one copy of the gene. On the gel, it was only possible to see three of the, three of the positive results. To compare the ability of amplification between clenol and TAC, different sizes of beta-globin 
genes were synthesized with various primer sets. In figure A, Klenow could not amplify longer than 250 base pair targets, while TEC amplified all the targets from 110 base pair to 400 base pair. Moreover, TEC was able to synthesize up to 2 kb target sequences with longer station time, which is shown in figure B. Using phase lambda human viable bus DNA library, the application of TEC capacity is shown. 16 plugs were randomly selected, and the CDNA inserts were PCR'd with TEC. As a result, the corresponding sizes of the inserts from 400 to 2000 base pair were detected. One plug that does not contain insert in it was also synthesized as it was predicted. This indicates that the PCR performed with TEC may be effective to isolate the inserts of proximal or phase recombinants. 100 base pair of a single copy beta globin gene is sequenced after PCR amplification with both Klenow and TEC. In the sequencing result of the product synthesized by Klenow, there are some unclear reasons that two nucleotides were detected. However, the sequences of the product amplified by TEC is clearly red. This may be because Klenow amplifies products non specifically, thereby it synthesizes delta globin present in the genome instead of beta globin. Delta globin is highly related to beta globin, and only a few nucleotides are, are different between these two. The differences are indicated by downward arrows in the prop sequence. In this experiment, it was represented that tech have higher specificity in amplification than clinal. In conclusion, the thermostable tech polymers can amplify products specifically, letting primer and needle temperature increase during PCR. The specificity of tech polymerase PCR is affected by the primer extension time, amount of enzymes, annealing temperature, and temp template concentration. Tech polymerase is able to amplify as little as a single target molecule in 10 to 5 to 10 to 6 cells and as long as 2 kb target size. Also, tech polymerase PCR may be applied to isolate the inserts of plasmid or phase recombinants. Thank you for watching, and please check out the other exciting topics in the series.